we magnify the name of the Lord right now. Just magnify the name of the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Magnify him right now. Magnify him right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just thank him right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We just adore you this morning. We appreciate you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, just thank you. Just thank you. Just thank you right now. <laughs> Daddy is faithful. Faithful. Daddy is faithful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead and magnify him, brethren. Hallelujah to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He is worthy. I've told you throughout this year, all we're doing is just praising him. For those breakthroughs, for those door openers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Magnify him where you are, brother. Magnify him where you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just say, Father, I thank you right now. Just thank you. Give him the glory and the honor. Give him the glory and the honor right now. All the praise should be his right now. Where you are, just clap for Jesus as you begin. Just clap for him as you begin to plead the blood of Jesus right now. Just clap for him as you begin to plead the blood. Just clap for him. Just clap for him. Clap for him where you are right now. Clap for him where you are right now. Clap for the King of Kings. Clap for the Lord of Lords. Clap for the I am that I am. Just clap for him right now. Clap for him. Plead the blood of Jesus over your homes right now. Over yourselves, over your children, over your brothers and sisters, your parents. Just plead the precious blood right now. Let the blood of Jesus speak right now. Let it 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 speak right now. Let the blood of Jesus, just let it speak where you are right now. Go ahead, let the blood of Jesus speak right now. Let the blood of Jesus speak right now. Let the blood of Jesus just speak right now. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus. We just plead the blood of Jesus. We just plead the blood of Jesus right now. Plead the blood of Jesus, brother. Plead the blood of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus right now. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the precious blood of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Plead that blood. Plead the blood right now. Plead the blood of Jesus. Sprinkle your homes with the blood of Jesus. Sprinkle the blood of Jesus right now. Sprinkle the blood of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. If you want to watch the video, the video is working. The live video is working. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Daddy, we plead your blood right now. We thank you for your faithfulness. Daddy, we exalt you. 
Daddy, we magnify you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Have your way this morning. Have your way this morning. Have your way. Be merciful to us. Forgive us, O Lord. Wherever we have missed it, by act of omission or commission, wherever we've gone against the grain, wherever we've been deliberately obedient, that uh, disobedient, wherever we have deliberately been caustic, where we have done the wrong things, where we have operated in all kinds of sin, Daddy will just come and ask for your amazing grace to speak for us. We just ask for the blood of Jesus again this morning. Lord, we ask that you have mercy wherever we have taken the blood of Jesus lightly. Daddy, we want to honor you. We ask that you show mercy to us, O Lord, as we go into prayers this morning. Show us mercy, Lord. Speak mercy to our situation right now. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. It is well with you. I'm so happy this morning because one of my daughters just had a baby not too long ago. Yeah, about 40, 45 minutes ago. We were praying for her. The other people were praying for yesterday. One of two people that attend the Thursday program that we've been, we've been praying to. And I believe that Jesus Christ is on the throne for the other sister. My little cousin. And God is also going to bring her on that day to have her baby normally in the name of Jesus. Where you are there, just say amen with me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we have our sister, Sister Kalea, just had a baby. Glory be to God. She comes on this prayer line too. So I just hope you keep her in your prayers. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This morning, like I said, for those who are online, uh, yesterday morning, we're going to be dealing with, uh, another of those, uh, very interesting things, you know, that afflict the children of God and for which as, as his prayer warriors, we need to pray. We need to be alert. We just need to be alert. Overcoming the <clears throat> the battles of inter-family, not intra now, but inter-family, inter-family, inter-family rivalries. Uh, please, as we're going on, if there's something wrong with the way I'm talking, if one of you can just kindly just tell me if I'm getting muffled for any reason, or even if the background music is too loud or something, whatever it is, because we're trying to improve on what we're doing at all times. Overcoming the battles of interfamily rivalry. Overcoming the battle of inter, not intra now. Inter means from one family to another. Overcoming the battle of interfamily rivalry. Now, our topic today is based on the effect of ancestral and present day rivalries between neighbors an old family friend. Many people have fought battles that have started from the simple jealousy of neighbors and associates. How many times has jealousy of the neighbors got you into trouble spiritually? How many times has that English saying, keeping up with the Jonas's, why, how much has it been the cause of many people's travails? The next door neighbor buys, um, a luxury car, maybe a Mercedes or an SUV of some sort, something that is quite luxurious, not just your run of the mill, uh, drive about car. And before it happening, the whole street, the tongues are wagging. Some will go and report them to the IRS and say, check that guy's, see if he has paid his tax. How could he afford to buy that? I remember in the seventies, in the early seventies, where my parents and I were living somewhere in um, Baltimore in those days. My dad, uh, it was my mom, it was my mom. She was in her, she was doing her, uh, residency as a pediatrician. I was in the very early 70s. And she bought 
the Toyota, is what you call it, well, the Toyota Mark II, they call it back in those days. But it was a new kind of car to everybody. It was just when Toyota was coming up. You know, and um, before we knew what was happening, the IRS had written her and my dad a letter. A neighbor had gone to report because we were living in a predominantly white neighborhood, which in the 70s was a, a fit of some kind back then. And a neighbor had gone to report. And before he knew what was happening, the IRS was knocking on the door. How did you buy this car? And you paid your taxes and so on and so forth. That is what I, the kind of thing I'm talking about tonight. The kind of stress that comes because of the neighborhood you are in or because of interfamily rivalry. And like I said yesterday, I know a girl who was in boarding school in those days when we were in boarding school in the mid 70s, you know, and her friend's mom would come and pick them up from school at the end of the term. When the woman would ask what her results were, I mean, hers would be straight A's. While she would ask her daughter, how was your school? And then the girl would uh, bring out her report card right inside the car before they even got home. And you see she's got F's and E's and all kinds of things. And of course, the woman went to the local voodoo priest. And what did she go to do? She went and exchanged the virtues of the poor other girl. Just laid her hands in voodoo priest told her to lay hands on that other girl and transpose her hands over her own child. And as she did that, all of a sudden, her own child became a straight A student. And this poor or suspecting girl, whose parents were probably not prayer warriors, started doing very badly in school. That has happened to many children. Many children. I also know of a sister. Maybe if my wife is online, I don't know if she is. She will remember that sister when we were in Lagos, who, who could never have children. And what was her problem? She had gone on a holiday with one of her girlfriends, a little girl, when they were little girls, and the mother had sewn the same dress for both of them. But one dress, after she wore the dress, because they were almost the same size, the woman of, said, I'll wash the clothes, you kids go and play. And she took off their clothes, had marked her own, and she did some funny things to it. And and she took the dress and gave it to her daughter, and, and from that point on, what made they wore it, the woman somehow took uh, dresses, went missing. But from that day that sister had problems. The effects of interfamily rivalry. Jealousy among families develops over who has the most money or who has the best car or who has the best job or who has the best cabin by the lake. <laughs> Many families do not find personal satisfaction in the relationships with other neighbor families, but in competition over who has what. Net worth or special items give many people some inner feeling of superiority. And that is exactly what causes problems. The Bible says, do not put your treasures in things that are lost, stolen, or will rot. It says, put your tre uh, treasures in heaven where there is an eternal reward. Friends, I can tell you, I'm sure you know, Everything that we have on earth here, they are all just uh, temporary things. You have the best car, you have the best job. What are they? They are all temporary things. They're just to be used while you're here. You have a 6,000 square feet house, and that doesn't count the basement. You have bank accounts that run into millions. All those things will not last, my dear. It isn't important what you have, as it is what you do with what you have that is important. But like I said, a lot of grief has come to many of us because we have friends and other families jealous or envious of what God has simply given us just by His grace, just by unmerited favor. The things that we are that we are enjoying now, that is by unmerited favor, has caused problems for many of us. Abraham had faith in God. God was the possession that he valued the most. We see that with Abraham. Though he was rich, his intention was not on who had the most herds or the nicest land. If you remember his uh, nephew, Lot, he took him along. And Lot, after a while, of course, Abraham, Abraham was prospering. But the Lord did not tell him to take Lot, but he went to Lot. After a while, he was prospering, and his cousin said, we need to split, because they are, they are shepherds, they are good herds, they are cattle herds, 
they were bickering over who would take what land. So the man said, okay, take wherever you want. And of course, the guy took the nicest land. But his uncle was more concerned, had been more uh, interested in him having a good relationship. So Abraham was willing, that is our father, our spiritual father Abraham, was willing to compromise and even give up his rights for something more important. You know, he was more interested in, 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 in having a good relationship with his nephew. And this is the kind of life that Paul was talking about when he said in uh, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, he says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul had learned to be content in every circumstance. He was a guy who was a lawyer and who now became a tent maker so that he could preach Jesus. And he was content with what he had. In other words, he had learned to stop running after what he didn't have so that he could enjoy what he did have. Much of the stress and clutter in our lives is caused by our discontent. I tell you today, I have learned to be content. There was a time when I had a lot. But I've learned to be content with what God gives me for the moment. Because you need to be able to be in that situation to be able to serve him better. There are so many instances in the Bible where a simple family rivalry has destroyed destinies for generations. The first instance started when two nations were born the same day, inside the same womb, Jacob and Esau. The two nations, the Israelites and the Edomites, they became enemies till today, even though they progressed from the same belly. The descendants of Jacob, who was Israel, and his brother Esau, who was also Edom, they began to, be, they began to feud. And they have the Israelites against the Edomites. If you look inside the Bible, apart from Israelites, I think the Edomites are the most named uh, nation in the Bible. And they came from the same womb, but they were always fighting. I mean, Genesis 36, it records, it records the family tree of Esau. And it lists many names still associated with the land of Edom, that is what you call Southern Jordan today. And it mentions individuals whose unfavorable interactions with the people of Israel are recorded for us, you know, in the Old Testament. So you can see Today, the people of southern Jordan, they still have issues with the Israelites today. Who are there from inside the same womb? Inter family feuds. They become different families. In Genesis chapter 13 and 14, like I was saying earlier, Abraham and Lot also were initially family members, one being an uncle to the other. But jealousy crept in when Lot felt his uncle was deeper than him. And when the uncle gave him a choice of land, he took what he felt was the better land. But we'll see later on that Lot had issues. Ultimately, through incest, his two daughters fathered nations that became enemies with Abraham's lineage. Genesis 19, 36 and 37. It says, so both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. Moab's, Moab means from father, and he's the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben Amin. He is the father of the Ammonites till today. If you go and trace where the Ammonites settled, that was the source of it. It was from incest. But like I said, they are the greatest enemies of those you call the Israelites. These are Palestinians now. They are the ones fighting the Israelites. But they all came from the original lineage together. But then they were born of incest. Till today, the family of the pharaohs, they hate the Israelites. The Egyptians hate the Israelites. Pharaohs were the cause of problems. For 430 years, the Israelites from one uh, nation, they were slaves to the Egyptians, the pharaohs. Until today, Egypt and Israel, they barely, they barely coexist, depending on who is ruling them. During the time of... Um, and Wasadat and uh, the guy who just left, I've forgotten his name now, and Wasadat's uh, deputy for many years. During his time, things were a bit peaceful. Now, Morsi, uh, the Mohammedan, has taken over, has taken over the place, and now they're beginning to say evil things about Israel again. That is because, like I said, the family of the pharaohs, they've always fought against the family of the Israelites. That is the way this interfamily 
uh, fields, that is the way they start. They start as individual fields. Now, give me, let me give you another example. The family of Goliath, they hated the Israelites. They were two sworn enemies. I mean, David and Goliath, let me tell you the interesting thing many people don't know about them. David and Goliath, they were the third generation descendants of Ruth and Opa. If you remember Ruth and Opa, uh, and Opa in, in the book of Ruth, many of us might not know that Ruth and Opa were, they were Moabite sisters. They were from these same descendants of, uh, these same descendants of, uh, of Moab. They were Moabite sisters. Ruth and Opa. And they married into one family. Upon the death of their husbands, Ruth adopted the Israelites as her people through her mother-in-law, as we all remember, Naomi, and the God of Israel as her God. On the other hand, Opa returned to her people and married the Philistine. The Philistines were cursed by God. Philistia is the land of the Philistines. If you look at Psalm 60 verse 8 and uh, Psalm 87 verse 4, you see that Philistia is the land of the Philistines. They were a powerful sea people settling down in the coastal area from Joppa to the south of Gaza. They were a strong rival to Israel. And like I said, they were set, they settled by the coastal area. So they had issues of marine spirits. David, the youngest son of Jesse, was the grandson of Ruth and Boaz. If you go and look at the lineage. Meanwhile, Goliath was the third generation of Orpa also. So they were from the same, they were sisters. Ruth and Orpa were sisters. But this is like David and Goliath, they had become so far away that they got to a stage where both of them stood in front of each other and one slung a stone to kill the other one. Opa went and married into a family of giants. That is how this, the lineage of Goliath went on. If you study the Bible, you see their lineage went on and on. They were giants in that family. Eight footers, nine footers. That's where Opa. Opa didn't face God. She went and went back to those who were caused by God. The family of the Herods also. The family of the Herods. They hated the family of Jesus. Who were the family members of Jesus? John the Baptist was his family, was his first cousin. They were the ones that saw virtually to the end of John the Baptist and Jesus. There are three members of the family of Herod that figure prominently in the life of Jesus Christ. There was Herod the Great. There was Herod Achelaus. And there was Herod Antipas. Three of them. Herod the Great was the one who met with the Magis when Jesus was born and wanted to have Jesus killed and said they should go and, should go and put to the sword all children under two. That was when uh, Joseph had to take Jesus out to Egypt for a while. Herod Antipas was the one who had John the Baptist assassinated. Now they were the same family, they were lineages. Herod the Great was like the grand, was the father of Herod uh, Achalos. And I think, I'm not sure, I think Herod Antipas was also his grandson. That's about there's the same family, the Herod family. They figure prominently in Jesus' life. Great was the, was the one that was king when he was born. When he died, Achilles ruled in his place. Then Herod Antipas ruled Galilee during the time of Jesus' public ministry. He was the one who had John the Baptist executed. Herod Antipas thought that Jesus was actually John raised from the dead. And Herod went to kill Jesus as he had done John the Baptist. Herod Antipas saw Jesus during his trial, but was disappointed that Jesus could perform no miracles in his presence. So, brethren, the, the list goes on and on. Jealousy and envy was also the beginning of problems between the Saul family and the Jesse family, of which David was ultimately the spiritual leader. Oh, Saul has slain his thousands, David his ten thousand. That was what the women of Israel sang, and a great few that went on for years started from that. I mean, let me read it quickly to you. First Samuel 8, 6 to 11. It says, when the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrels and lairs. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Verse 8 says, Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought in his mind, but with me with only thousands. What more can he get for the kingdom? And from that time on, the Bible says, Saul kept a close eye on David. So he said, David had done no wrong, but he was jealousy, was the spirit of jealousy. 
The Bible says in verse 10, it says, The next day an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while he was playing the lair as he usually did. Saul had his spear in his hand and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Let me bring it closer to home. I mean, to, uh, those were very, very long times ago. If you look at those who study uh, English history, Scotland and, Eng and England till today, if you go and check their, their, their newspapers, you'll see that they are what you can call frenemies, enemies. <laughs> enemies that are friends for centuries. They are the same nation. Mary became Queen of Scotland. There's somebody called Mary Queen of Scotland. Those of you who did history, don't they? Mary became Queen of Scotland as a baby and was next in line for the English throne after her older cousin, Elizabeth I. Elizabeth, however, refused to acknowledge Mary as her heiress and was threatened by the Roman Catholics who saw Mary as a true queen. So in those days, there was a fight between who was an Anglican and who was a Roman Catholic. Who was a protestant was, and that was the reason it was that freed over what kind of christianity should we embrace and then she did not accept her little cousin to take over from her so when mary the queen of scots foolishly ran to elizabeth for help following some poor political and personal decisions the cunning elizabeth did not come to her aid instead she had her cousin locked away for the next 18 years of her life and after an association plot was revealed ordered Mexico, uh, Mary's execution at the age of 44. So Mary was killed by her cousin. But we thank God that today beheadings don't factor into most into family rivalries these days. Let me give you some other examples now before we pray. Two of the world's most renowned shoe companies, sports shoe companies, Adidas and Puma, they were birthed from a bout of bad blood between siblings. In the 1920s, German brothers uh, Adolf and Rudolf Dassler Adidas, that's right. They launched a shoe company together in their mother's laundry room in their own house. And their business boomed after Dassler shoes had adorned the feet of uh, the Olympians of the 30s, in the days of um, Jesse James, I mean Jesse, what is his name? The guy who was uh, the great Jesse, Jesse Owens. But as their sales spiked, so did the tension between the two brothers. World War II proved to be the breaking point in their relationship. While the one is sure what caused the problem between them, some people said it was a result of, of miscommunication. And I tell you, many family feuds are caused by miscommunication. The ones inside your family and the ones from other families. It's small miscommunications. It was said that after an Allied bomb attack, you know, uh, in Germany in those days, Adolf and his wife took cover in a bomb shelter. That had been occupied by his brother Rudolf and his whole family. And then the guy, Adolf, said, The dirty bastards are back again. He was referring to the planes that were, that were bombing them, but his brother thought the comment was against his own family, and that was the beginning of their problem. Oh, we are calling us dirty bastards. And that wasn't the problem. The problem was that he was talking about the English that were bombing them. By the war's end, the brothers had split the company and waged a war of their own in the business at the arena. Adolf was in fact who he called, he called, he called Adi. He named his business Adidas. That's where you wear Adidas shoes and clothes today. Combining his first and last name, Rudolf, the brother, he tried the same with a firm called Ruda, which he then changed the name to Puma. You know, the, the story is that they, they never spoke again. And the bitter rivalry divided their town, you know, where they built their competing factories on the opposite banks of the same river. <laughs> and I hear it was just September 2009, after the brothers had died for many years, that the companies put aside their inter-family feud, and then they played a game of soccer, a friendly uh, uh, game of soccer. There's another family in, uh, in America, the Hatfields. If you go and study, go and look for it. If I found it uh, one day, I was just going through the internet, I found it. Hatfields and the McCoys. They are the ones that practically invented the interfamily feud. Today, people say their names in jest. But I hear that in the 1880s and in the 1890s, the rivalry was so serious that they used to kill themselves. No one could trace the origin of, of the fight between the two families. They said that it was after the, somebody said somebody stole somebody's home. That's like a pig. 
And that was the beginning of a big family fight that went on for almost a uh, hundred years. You know, sometimes uh, one of the Hatfields killed another of the McCoys. And then those ones came and kidnapped and executed another three of them. And the families kept on exacting revenge over each other for years. See, the dangerous side of these rivalries, brethren, <clears throat> this kind of interfamily rivalry, is the extent to which one family will go to get rid of the other or to harm the other or to harm their destinies. As you can see from the example above that I'm talking about, people are ready to kill, even to get one over, the, just to get one over. They will go to any extent. They will do voodoo. They will make up evil shrines. They will, do, they will make curses. They will make evil covenants and witchcraft. Whatever it takes just to get one over the other family. If your family has been secretly feuding with another family, you might be bearing the brunt of it today and you don't even know. Especially if you come from a small town or village where everyone knows the success of everyone else. Or if rival families have their skills in the same kind of businesses and you can see what happened there. Or maybe they are competing just in school sports. Or maybe they are competing in academics. Or maybe they are competing for the same girl. Or maybe even the girls are competing in a beauty, in a beauty contest. That is enough for some families to have problems. What we need to do is pray prayers to remove these things, brethren. And I want you to pray. We're going to pray some prayers right now. I want you to pray these prayers very, very well. If the Holy Spirit will tell us anything about any family or anything online, so be it. It will be very good to know. But I want you to pray very well. The first thing I'm going to pray, say, Father, this morning, I shut every door of destructive emotions, doors like bitterness, like rejection, like despondency, I have been kind around because of what other families did to me. Go ahead, go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I shut every door of destructive emotions, like bitterness, rejection, despondency, hatred, that I have been carrying around because of what other families did to me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray right now. Go ahead and pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I shut every door of destructive emotions like bitterness, like rejection, like despondency that I have been carrying around my, my person with what other families' abuse did to me. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The next prayer point. Every evil exchange of my glory, of my star, of my destiny, every evil exchange of the glory and the star, destiny of my children with that of someone else in another family, let it be neutralized and reversed this morning in the name of Jesus. Now you go ahead and pray that prayer right now. Let every evil exchange be destroyed right now with the blood of Jesus. Let it be destroyed right now with the blood of Jesus. Let it be destroyed right now with the blood of Jesus. Just go ahead and pray right now. Every evil exchange be destroyed with the blood of Jesus. Be destroyed with the blood of Jesus. Oh, go ahead and pray, my brethren. Ask that every evil exchange be destroyed with the blood of Jesus. Every evil exchange be destroyed with the blood of Jesus. Every evil exchange be destroyed with the blood of Jesus. Every evil exchange be destroyed with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You're going to say, let any unending contentions against my success from other families be put to death by the blood of Jesus this morning. Every unending contentions against my success by other families be put to death, be put to death in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus, be put to death by the blood of Jesus, be put to death by the blood of Jesus, be put to death by the blood of Jesus, be put to death. Go ahead and pray right now. Be put to death by the blood of Jesus. Be put to death by the blood of Jesus. Be put to death by the blood of Jesus. Be put to death by the blood of Jesus. Ask that those contentions be put to death by the blood of Jesus. As the contentions we put to death right now, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The next prayer point, I break all curses 
I break all hexes. I break all embargoes placed upon me or my family by other families in the times of jealousy, envy, and anger. In the name of Jesus, break it now with the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus, I break all curses, hexes, spells, embargoes placed upon me or my family by other families in times of jealousy, envy, and anger. I break it now. Go ahead and break it now. I break it now in the, in the name of Jesus. I break it now in the name of Jesus. I break all curses, hexes, spells, embargoes placed upon me by my family, by other families in times of jealousy in the name of Jesus. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. There's somebody online. Your father and his friend used to work in a factory. Your father and his friend used to work in a factory. And one day, your father bought a pair of shoes for your mother. But accidentally, his friend took it home with the man that, okay, I'll give it to him tomorrow. He accidentally took it home. That woman, that man's wife saw the, saw the shoes and said, who owns these shoes? And said, oh, it's, your, it's my friend's wife. Oh, he buys this, she buys this kind of shoes, these expensive shoes. And then the woman did some things with the shoes and it was given to your mother. And your mother became very sick in the feet. Her feet, she became very sick from that time. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord should remove that evil that has come upon your mother in the mighty name of Jesus. That long-standing sickness in the feet, let it be canceled right now. In the name of Jesus. That woman is still alive. Thank you, Lord. Let it be canceled now with the blood of Jesus. Be canceled now with the blood of Jesus. Be canceled now. They used to walk in a factory together. Let that thing be canceled now in the name of Jesus. Let it be canceled now in the name of Jesus. Let it be canceled now in the name of Jesus. Let it be canceled in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I said, I said, God will tell us some things. Hallelujah. The next prayer point. Ancestral interfamily jealousy. Ancestral interfamily jealousy that has brought problems upon my lineage be destroyed in Jesus' name. Go ahead and pray. Ancestral interfamily jealousy that has brought problems upon my lineage be destroyed in the name of Jesus. 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 Ancestral interfamily jealousy that has brought problems upon my lineage be destroyed in the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. There's somebody online. You are from the east of Africa. Hmm. You're online right now. You're from the east of Africa. And your dad, his farm, your dad has a farm. And his farm is shared with another family's farm. And there was a time when they did some voodoo because your dad's farm was was bearing more fruit. Yes, it, it was it, it was bearing more fruit. You are from East Africa. It was bearing more fruit, and I can see that you know his fruit was the, the, the fruits were bigger than the other family. So, but he has to pass through their farm to get to his own farm. So they placed some funny voodoo on the ground, and from there the man. Got very, very sick. I don't even know if he died from this sickness. I can't see right now. But it's like he died from the sickness or... I mean, the sickness was very bad. I pray right now that that evil that came upon your family, because of that jealousy, let it be cancelled. You're online. You're from East Africa. Let it be cancelled now in the name of Jesus. East to Southern Africa. Yeah. Let it be cancelled now in the name of Jesus. Let it be cancelled now in the name of Jesus. Let it be cancelled now in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go ahead and pray again. Say, Oh Lord, I forgive any wicked rival families this morning. Let every evil they have done to me or my family be reversed and let it turn out for good for us in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I forgive any wicked rival families this morning. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Lord, I forgive any rival 
uh, any rival uh, wicked families this morning. I forgive them in the name of Jesus. Every evil they have done to me or my family be reversed. So now for good for us, in the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I forgive. You have to forgive. Don't stop holding it against them. So that God can, can set you free. Oh Lord, I forgive any wicked rival family this morning. Let every evil they have done to me or my family, to my siblings, and then be reversed. Turn out for good for us in the name of Jesus. Turn out for good for us. In the name of Jesus, turn out for good for us. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. There's somebody online. You have a sister battling cancer right now. Cancer. Your sister is battling cancer. Many years ago, many years ago, she went and wore the clothes of one of your cousins. And the person was very, very unhappy. Is a is a family. Is they are fa your family rivals. It's not your father's family I'm talking about now, but your family rival. That is the other family is a rival to your father. They are your cousins also, my lady. And she went and wore the clothes, maybe wore to a party or something. And that person was very very annoyed. The woman that she wore her clothes did not wear the clothes again, but went and did some some diabolical things. And today. You have a sister who has cancer. Right now, let the whole power of the Holy Ghost go back right now and search out that cloth, even if it's long been destroyed. Let it be sought out in the spirit realm and let it be consumed right now. Let it be consumed right now. Let it be consumed right now. Whatever they spoke to the breast part of the cloth that is now causing cancer in that your sister, right now, by reason of the blood of Jesus, let that thing be destroyed now, be consumed by fire. And we decree, let the cancer disappear. It's of a diabolical nature. So we decree the curse that placed cancer under your sister. Let it be cancelled now by the blood of Jesus. Be cancelled now by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I said, God will say something. Hallelujah. They're going to pray. Any evil manipulations or carelessness or favoritism that has resulted in hardship and pain for my family. Any evil manipulations or carelessness or favoritism that has resulted in hardship for me and my family. Let it be wiped off by the blood of Jesus. Oh, go ahead and pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Any evil manipulations due to carelessness or favoritism that has resulted in hardship and pain for me and my family, be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Be wiped away. Pray, my brother and my sister. Let it be wiped away by the blood of Jesus this morning. Let it be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Be wiped away by the blood. Don't sleep with that sister. Be wiped away. You better pray. The Lord is setting you free. Be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody say amen where they are. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Say, let the Mount Zion of my family receive deliverance now. In the name of Jesus. Let the Mount Zion of my family receive deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, upon this mount shall be deliverance. Obadiah. Let the Mount Zion of my family receive deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let the Mount Zion of my family receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let the Mount Zion of my family receive deliverance right now. Receive deliverance. Receive deliverance. Receive deliverance. Receive deliverance. Receive deliverance now. Let that mountain and those of us on top of it right now in my family let us receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let us receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let us receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let us receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let us receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let us receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let us receive deliverance now. 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 Receive deliverance now in Jesus' name. We pray. There's somebody online. You've been you you, you are immigrated into North America. And you've been here for many years. I'm looking at somebody who has been here for close to 30 years. 
<clears throat> but when you are leaving, when you are leaving, when you are leaving, the family next to you was very, very jealous. Very, very jealous. And they spoke that nothing good shall come, shall become of that your truth. And it's almost like 30 years later. And what they have said has been happening. Nothing really good has been shown out of it. I decree right now in the name of Jesus. Let the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let the power in the blood of Jesus. Let the authority in the name of Jesus. Let it cancel that evil counsel. In the name of Jesus. Let it destroy that evil counsel. In the name of Jesus. Let it destroy that evil counsel. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. There's a family online right now. There's somebody of them in a family. Everybody has that shameful trait occurring in the family. Everybody. Everybody. Why? Because somebody took something like pepper. Spoke into it. And blew it. Blew it. Blew it into the air. And that pepper was, was like arrows. They sent them on arrows. And everybody in that family is showing that evil trait. I decree right now by the blood of Jesus. Let that evil trait be destroyed right now. Let the blood of Jesus ransom that evil trait right now. Let the blood of Jesus ransom and cancel it right now. 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 In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I'm going to decree. Every residual effect of childhood rivalry from my friend's family, let it disappear. That effect in your life. Every residual effect of childhood rivalry from my friend's family in my life disappear in the name of Jesus. Disappear in the name of Jesus. Disappear in the name of Jesus. Every residual effect of childhood rivalry for my friend's family that is occurring in my life, that evil effect, let it disappear this morning in the name of Jesus. Let it disappear this morning in the name of Jesus. Let it disappear this morning in the name of Jesus. Let it disappear this morning in Jesus' name we have prayed. You that person, your mother never used to get home in time. So you go and stay with the with the family next to you. And the woman was feeding you with the seeds of poverty. Feeding you cause because she was in a witchcraft coven. Feeding you with the seeds of poverty. I decree right now. Bible says the stranger shall hear my voice, it shall obey me. I command that evil seed you have swallowed. Let it come out of you physically right now. In the name of Jesus. Let it come out of you physically right now. In the name of Jesus. So I command that thing right now. If you have to cough it out, cough it out right now. I command that belly right now not to be able to contain that thing anymore. I command it forcibly out of you right now in the name of Jesus. Let it come out of you forcibly right now in the name of Jesus. Let it come out of you forcibly right now in the name of Jesus. Let that thing come out of you forcibly, you that person. In the name of Jesus, that evil sweet that you have been given to swallow many years ago, I command it to come out of you right now. If you suddenly feel the urge to throw up or vomit or cough out something, that's no problem. You go to the bathroom and do it. Take your phone with you, but go to the bathroom and do it right now. In the name of Jesus, I command in the Bible says, the stranger shall hear my voice. They shall be afraid. They shall come out of their hiding places. The Bible says he has swallowed up riches and they shall vomit them. I command your riches that were swallowed up by that seed now, as the seed is vomiting out of you, let your riches come out also in the name of Jesus. So I command those riches to be restored back to you right now. I command that thing to, to take a hold and no evil shall befall you again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. There's a woman online. You are from the north, northeast of America right now. You are from the north, northeast of America. They have said that none of your lineage, this is family rivalry, another family, they have said that none of your lineage will be able to, to track husband, that is, you will not be able to stay with the husband. It's happening to you, 
is happening to your child and so on and so forth. They are from the north, northeast of America right now. I decree right now that that evil curse placed by another family or your family is cancelled right now. Let it be cancelled by the authority in the name of Jesus. I have no power, but my God, my Savior, Jesus Christ is the God of salvation. Right now, let him save you right now. In the name of Jesus, let him save you right now. In the name of Jesus, let him save you right now. You, that woman, north, north, east. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. North, north, east. I decree right now, in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost, let him save your family right now. Save that your lineage right now. Save your lineage right now. Save your lineage right now. Save your lineage right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for the wonderful testimony of the birth of that child. And, oh, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for all the testimonies that are online of those who are online and the words of knowledge and the words of wisdom you've given us just now. Daddy, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to bless your name. In Jesus' name. There's somebody online. Your mother's best friend is your worst enemy. <laughs> Glory to God. Your mother's best friend is your worst enemy. Where is your mother? Your mother has passed. The best friend is now like your mother to you. It's my mother's friend, so she's like my mother. But she's your worst enemy. She still compares you every day, even though you are not a young person anymore. She still compares you every day with her own child you the person i'm talking about you are definitely over i think you're over you're over 40 yeah that person is over 40. that woman still compares you every day still compares you every day okay i'm sorry that person say what do you mean i'm not young okay you are young sorry <laughs> hallelujah but that woman still compares you every day with her child even though your mother and you see her as your mother Right now, let the evil woman be exposed and disgraced. And let her power be neutralized right now. Let the evil woman be exposed, be disgraced. Let her power, let it show up right now. Show up right now. Show up right now in the name of Jesus. Let it show up right now in the name of There's a fellow online right now from the North Midwest of America. We are there right now. I decree right now. I command right now. Your father, Rabos Kiria. Spare parts, his friend who is a spare parts dealer, always lending your father money. You that fellow. Now, what has happened is that he has given your father bad money. When I say bad money, I mean diabolical money. Money that some evil has been done to. And I decree right now that evil has been affecting your family. Money never stays in your father's hand anymore. Let the power of the Holy Ghost free you right now and free that family. You are in the Midwest. Mid West, your father's friend sells spears. That's like motto spears. Let the power of God free that person right now. Free that person right now. Free that person. Jesus name. Amen. There's somebody from the Caribbean. There's somebody from the Caribbean right now. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Problem started because of the palm. What is this? No grave assembly. The palm, like uh, coconut tree, this is incredible. Problem started because usually they share that coconut that comes from the coconut tree. And you guys, you know, somebody said, no, I'm having a coconut this time. This happened many years ago. And problem started in that, in those families. Because of the coconut. Wow. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I pray right now, let the mercy of God go and reveal it. Reveal the family to the family members. And let there be some form of uh, correction. Because people who fought, they have gone. But the curses they have placed on their families. Right now, I decree, let the curses be lifted right now. Let the blood of Jesus lift the curses right now. Let the authority in the name of Jesus lift those curses. Lift those curses. Lift it. This is how you know yourself. You, that person. Your homes are not too far from the, from the sea. They're not, not too far. Your homes are not too far from the sea. Your homes are not too far. Your homes are less than like a mile from the sea. You used to walk towards the sea. Maybe. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This is a day of deliverance. Thank you, eternal King of glory. Blessed be your name. 
God is wonderful. I want to beg you. I know many of you want to finish the sermon. You want to get up the line. Let us hear testimonies this morning. Let us hear the goodness of God this morning. Don't just go up the line. Let us hear testimonies. So I'm going to ask right now if anybody has a testimony, let them give us those testimonies. I'll pray for everybody towards the, towards the, the, the yeah. If God is leading you right now, we're spending money trying to revamp. I'm, I'm working, I'm going to work even after now, trying to get, you know, I, I, I took it over myself, trying to get all those videos sorted out, those things I was telling you about. Some people did give us some money, we spent the money. I want it, I want it to be permanent so that we don't have this issue. We need to keep these videos for posterity and for you to be able to go back and for others to look at them. So if God is leading you, send the offerings. Send the offerings. I told you about the offering to send books to the, to the prisons. We did it. We did a book signing last week. There's this wonderful mother of mine, Mother Hillary, and she pushed it and pushed it and we went for the book signing. And we have sent some books to the prisons. But we need to send more. Brethren, there are people dying in prison because they don't have knowledge of their lives. Send some money towards the prison and let us use it to send those books to the prisons. If God depend on you in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have a testimony right now, where are you? Speak up. Speak up if you have a testimony right now. Glory be to God. Do we have anybody that can tell us a testimony right now? I just told you one of us has had a baby. Anybody else with testimony? Oh, glory be to God. This is very nice. If nobody has a testimony, then let me switch off the phones. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to share a testimony right now? Glory be to God. Well, let, let, us, let us pray if nobody has a testimony. I know I have a testimony that my life is always a testimony for me. Hallelujah. So let us, let us, Father, I just want to thank you right now. Lord Jesus, we just bless your holy name. We magnify your name. You are the king of kings. You are more than enough. Does anybody have a testimony? Lord, I want to thank you. Jesus, we ask right now as the week, as you're going into the week right now, let your mercy speak, Father. Let your mercy speak for your children in the name of Jesus. Let mercy speak for your children, every single one of them, in the name of Jesus. As we go into the new week, O oh Lord, let there be diverse testimonies as a result of all that we have prayed about. Let there be diverse testimonies, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit reign supreme in our lives, in everything we do this week. Those that are look, going to look for jobs, oh Lord, let them meet with favor. Those that are going to look for spouses, let them meet with spouses. Those that are going to look for improvements in, in, in their ministries, let them meet with favor in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we ask for open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors in the name of Jesus. Let there be open doors, O oh Lord. Let there be open doors, Father. Let there be open doors, Jehovah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Jesus, name we pray. God is saying there's somebody online. You're pregnant. Congratulations. <laughs> Don't go and remove the child. You're pregnant. Glory be to God. You're pregnant. I'm not talking about an old pregnant. I'm talking about something that just happened. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It is well with you. Hallelujah. Well, if there's no testimony again, I would just want to wish everybody a wonderful, very, very wonderful week ahead. I wish all of you a wonderful week. Be faithful to Jesus. Try to stay away from sin. If sin comes, quickly repent and ask the Lord for forgiveness. May God depend on you for his kingdom. Amen. Yes, somebody wants to give a testimony. Glory be to God. Okay, glory be to God. I want to thank God for everything.